I've been the pastor of this church now for 23 years. Y'all supposed to say amen, praise the Lord right there. I thought somebody would be happy to hear that great news. They, they said I wouldn't make it. They said I wouldn't be here today. They said I would never amount to anything. But I'm glad that I can say I'm still here. During the course of our walk with God, I've been pastoring for 23, preaching for 40 years. This year, 40 years celebrating preaching in the ministry, 40 years. I would like to tell y'all that during that whole 40-year period, and during the whole 23 years of my pastorate, that I have walked with God every day, every step of the way, where my heart and mind was always focused on the Lord, obeying Him. I was dotting every I and crossing every T, thinking right, talking right, walking right. But that would be far from the truth. Shock and disbelief swarms across the congregation. As a matter of fact, during the courses of my journey and my walk with God, I have had seasons of backslid, being backslidden. So have you. I was waiting for y'all to say me too had seasons and periods when I've fallen off the back of the bus, when I've allowed my flesh to take charge instead of God being in charge of me, when I allowed what I wanted to rule rather than what God wanted to rule. And periodically, God has reined me back in. I love that God would, see what this verse says, verse 14, I'm coming back to that. God says, I'm going to grab you wherever you are. I'm going to find you and I'm going to bring you back to Zion. I like that. God says, I'm going to bring you back to where you are supposed to be. You might be in a backslidden condition today, but God says, I'm going to bring you back. And somebody here today, God wants to bring you back to the perfect place of being in his will that he's called you to be in. So periodically during the course of my pastorate, I have to talk about being backslidden. I think over the 23 years, this is about the third or fourth time that I talked about being in a backslidden condition, and I want to spend a few moments this morning talking about it. It's Because see, here's what I discovered. It's easy to wander away from God. It doesn't happen suddenly overnight. It starts off with small compromises. It starts off with missing church here and there. Stopping devotions occasionally. Doing stuff that you know you ain't supposed to do just this last time. <laughs> and y'all know how many times the last time. Amen. Oh, there y'all go acting like y'all don't know what I'm talking about again. It is a, it's a process that you just don't wake up overnight and find yourself in a backslidden condition. It's little compromises that go little by little. Before you know it, you are totally outside and away from God. As a matter of fact, the desire, the, 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 the desire of the devil is to lure you into a backslidden condition. I discovered it's possible to be in church every week and yet in a backslidden condition. Matter of fact, it's possible to be backslidden and not even know it. You can think that everything's okay because you got the cross around your neck, you got the Bible in your hand, you come to church every week, Amen. You, 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 can, you, can, you can be religious and in a backslidden condition. Go on and preach, Pastor Jenkins. I ain't going to say nothing. This is a Bible study. I thought I would just walk through and give you the characteristics of what a backslider looks like. I don't give these to you so you can evaluate this time the person sitting next to you. Instead, I want you to evaluate the person sitting in your seat. I'm always asking y'all to look around if somebody on your row is jacked up, toe up from the floor up. But on today, I don't want you looking up and down your row. I want you to look in your seat. The first characteristic of a backslider happens to be right here in Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 11. Here's what it says. Then the Lord said to me, this is Jeremiah talking, the Lord said to me, backsliding Israel has shown herself more righteous than treacherous Judah. See, here's the first condition of a backslider. A backslider, write this down, justifies themselves. In other words, here's what 
here's what here's what the people of here's what Judah did. Here's what the people of God did. He, they compared Israel compared herself to her sister tribe Judah. And 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 when Israel compared herself to Judah, she she boasted herself that she was all right. She was better. She was righteous because she compared herself to Judah. And God is saying uh, Israel is in a backsliding condition and they have made themselves seem more righteous by comparing themselves to jacked up Judah. You will always seem more righteous when you compare yourself to somebody else. See, here's what backsliders do. Backsliders say, I may have done this, but I didn't do that. Go ahead and teach, Pastor. You see, ultimately, what all of us have to do is not compare ourselves to each other because you can always find somebody else whose life is more jacked up than yours. You can always find somebody who's doing something worse than you. But we cannot compare ourselves to others because when we stand before God and have to give an account to him for our choices and our decisions on a day-by-day -day basis, the person you compare yourself to will be nowhere around. As a matter of fact, what you're going to find yourself doing uh, when we stand before the Lord, we will have to be evaluated against the, against the character of Jesus himself. Don't compare yourself to nobody else. Uh, uh, guess what? I've discovered and learned that when I compare myself to the standards of this word, I always realize I have a long way to go. Can I get an amen right there? I can't pat myself on the back. I can't stick my head up in the air. I can't boast on who I am because when I think I've arrived, I get in this word and it smacks me upside my head and tells me, you ain't all that, John Jenkins. All of y'all supposed to be saying amen right there on that point. I'm not all of that. You're not all of that. We cannot justify ourselves. A backslider justifies themselves in comparing themselves to somebody else. Well, since y'all got so excited about that one, let me slide on to my second characteristic. It too is in the book of Jeremiah in chapter 8. If you slide over to chapter 8, I want to read for you verse 5. Here's what verse 5 says. Surely if you didn't see yourself in number one, you'll see yourself in number two. Here's what verse 5 says. Why has this people slidden back Jerusalem in a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast to deceit. They refuse to return. There's the next characteristic of a backslider. They hold fast to deceit and refuse to return. They hold fast to lies. You can't convince them that the lie that they have embraced is a falsehood. They hold fast to the lies of the enemy and they refuse to return to the truth of God. Ultimately, I've, dis I've discovered this about God and I've discovered this about bondages that people are in. I discovered that every bondage in somebody's life can trace itself back to some lie that somebody has accepted as truth. And a backslider holds on to that deceitful lie. Don't you know that the devil wants to deceive you, deceive you and make you think that things are one way when in reality they are different? Don't you know that the devil wants to lie to you and wants you to believe the lie? He wants to make you think the Bible is not God's word. He wants to make you believe you cannot be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. He wants you to believe that you can't get free from your habits and your addictions. He wants to give you lies and deceits. And a person who is in a backslidden condition holds on to those lies and refuses to return to the truth that God has to answer. But I come here today, I am on a rampage. I am out here to bind and rebuke the lies of the devil and I'm trying to bring some soul back to Jesus to know I don't care how jacked up you are, there is a bomb in Gilead. There is a physician there who has made provisions for your sins to be washed away. I don't care how deep in sin you are, there is the blood of Jesus who will wash away all of your sins and pull you up out of the muck and miry clay and set your feet on a solid rock to stay. You can be saved. You can be delivered. You can return to God. God is so no distant monster. Matter of fact, he's waiting with his arms wide open for you to come back to him. 
As a matter of fact, it doesn't matter how far you are, how far away you are, how long you've been away. He loves you, and he's waiting with his arms stretched out wide. I don't know who I'm preaching to. All I know is that you're here. Look at your neighbor. He said, tell him, you're here, you're here, you're here. He's talk I, I know the Lord is talking to somebody today. Say, you started with me. Come on back to where you belong. Tell somebody right now. He, he's waiting for you to return to him and stop holding on to the deceit. Let me roll on to number three since y'all accepted that was such enthusiastic jubilee. I got seven to go today. Uh, let me just give you number three. Zephaniah chapter one. You're not going to find it. Just let me read it to you right here. Zephaniah is in the Old Testament near the back of, of uh, the Old Testament. Uh, matter of fact, if you go to Malachi and start moving back, you're going to hit Z Zechariah, then you're going to hit Haggai, and then Zephaniah. You ain't never read it probably in all your, all your life. If you can't find it, if you don't know where Malachi is, just go to the beginning of the Bible, to the table of content and look what page is on and when you find it turn on to the page of Zephaniah because he gives us the third characteristic I want to talk about is chapter 1 and verse 6 Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 6 those who have turned back from following the Lord y'all see that are y'all with me look up on the screen you ain't gonna find it you're too slow it's just one verse those who have turned back from following the Lord, here it is, characteristic number three, and have not sought the Lord nor inquired of him. He says, let me talk to you who've turned their backs away from following God. Here's a characteristic. They haven't sought God nor inquired of him. They don't talk to God. They don't ask God. They just do what they want to do. Go on and preach, Pastor. I'm teaching and preaching right here. They have decisions. They have challenges in life. They don't ask God for direction. They don't get on their knees and seek his face. They just do what they want to do. They don't inquire of God. It's a dangerous thing. I've discovered that when I face challenges in life, I need to ask somebody who knows what the answer is for me to get out of this situation. And some of you have dug a deeper hole for yourself because you're too proud to humble yourself and ask God for help. Those who have turned back from following the Lord did not seek him. They did not sought, the scripture says, they have not sought him nor acquired of him. Not in their daily decisions. I don't know where y'all are, but I have to talk to God every day. Every day I need to ask him what direction do I need to turn in. It's a, it's a lifestyle. I, I have too many decisions to make. I have too many things to do. I've got too many places to go and I cannot make, take the risk of missing out on God's direction one iota. I cannot take the risk of making one bad decision. I, I can't take the risk of going down one bad road. I want to make the right decisions every day. Do I have any witnesses in here today who knows that if I make the wrong choice, if I make the wrong decision, the consequences can be devastating. Somebody in here today has made some horrific decisions. And it's because you're in a backslidden mode and you didn't seek after God. So a backslider does not ask God for his direction, does not seek the Lord, does not inquire of him. When's the last time you asked God for direction? And when's the last time you waited for him to give an answer? Oh, wait a minute. Let me drop this in. Let me, can, can I sneak this in real quick while I'm here? Not only do you seek after God when you seek it, when you're loving the Lord and in right fellowship, you learn to wait to hear him answer you. Some of us are impatient and we haven't learned how to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And I've discovered about God, he might not answer as quickly as I desire, but I do believe and know that he will always answer. And when he answers, he's right on time. Can I get an amen right there from anybody? Here's number four. It's in Hosea chapter 11 and verse one, uh, verse seven. It's just a few pages back. Hosea chapter 11 and verse seven. And this is going to get a lot of y'all, this one right here. A lot of the eight o'clock crowd. Verse 7 says, my people are bent on backsliding from me. Y'all ever met somebody bent on doing wrong? 
no matter what warning God gives them, no matter what effort God tries to give them to get right, they are bent on, so hit your neighbor next to you, say, wake up, bro. Say, wake up, you should have went to bed last night before you came to church. Hit him, say, you need this right here. The devil's trying to put you to sleep. Don't miss this scripture right here. So my people are bent on backsliding from me. Though they call to the most high, none at all exalt him. I like this verse right here. He says, the fourth characteristic is a backslider will not exalt the Lord. In other words, the word exalt means lift up, elevate, set on high, put him in his proper place. When you are in backslidden condition, it's difficult for you to worship God. You see, a backslider will not give God the praise and honor that is due to him. While everybody around them is exalting the Lord and praising his name, the backslider got their hands folded and looking straight ahead. I can't understand as good as God has been to you and I, as many doors as he has opened, the miracles he has wrought. You can't exalt him. You can't give him praise. You can't say, thank you, Jesus. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a sign of a backslider who just can't give him the praise and the glory that is due his mighty name. I don't know where y'all are, but I look back over my life and think about everything that God has brought me through. I can't help but praise him. I got to give him the glory. Nobody has to beg me or ask me when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me. When I ponder the doors he's opened for me and the holes he's dug me out of and the miracles he's wrought and the prayers he answered, I got to praise his name. I got to exalt him. I got to magnify. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. As quiet as it's kept, he wants his name to be exalted. And he calls for his children to exalt his name. Matter of fact, when you exalt his name, souls get saved. When you exalt his name, people come out of the bondages that they're in. Amen. There is no name given among men whereby men must be saved other than the name of Jesus. We are saved in his name and healed in his name and delivered in his name and shackles come off in his name. I exalt his name. But oh, not for the backslider. He's too arrogant. He's too cute. He's too stuck in his ways. And he's been on not praising the Lord. It doesn't matter if the pastor say, go ahead and put your hands up and give him some praise. They still going to hold their hands down. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to you, I think, this time. Y'all not hearing me. Y'all ever met somebody who refuses to do what's right? Even when they know it's the right thing to do? You know it's the right thing to give him the glory. You know what I discovered about God? I don't care how raggedy your life is, he still is worthy of praise. He still is worthy to be lifted up. And if you can come in here week after week and Sunday after Sunday and month after month and year after year and never exalt his name, I suggest you might be in a backslidden condition. And you know what my thank you means? You know when I, when I exalt God, you know what it means? It means I recognize who did for me what was done and I'm giving him the credit. <laughs> y'all, excuse me, y'all shouldn't have got me started this morning. You didn't pull yourself up by your bootstraps. It's not your education that got you where you are. It's not your skill sets that got you where you are. It's the goodness of the Lord that brought you goodness of God. It's his miracles. He did it. Hey, hey, hey. He 
opened the door. He worked the miracle. He answered your prayer. He brought you out. He is a deliverer. He did it. Hey, hey. God, I bless your holy name. He did it. He did it. He did it. When you were out there doing everything you wanted to do, living the way you wanted to live, he brought you out. He spared your life. He kept you safe while you were acting a fool. Should have been dead, buried in the grave. You ought to be in hell right now, but he kept you alive until you got saved. Hey, hallelujah. He did it. He did it. You should be in jail. All them laws you broke. All them drugs you used. You should be in jail. But he kept you. You should be in the hospital with AIDS. All them people you done slept with. But he kept you. Christ he saved me delivered me and I gotta live for him today's dynamic message from Pastor Jenkins is one that has the power to change your life but it can only do so if you have a heart and soul that belong to Jesus Christ perhaps you want to be able to make such a claim but you don't know how it's simple you just have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and rose again with all power. Your sins are now forgiven and you're part of the family of God. Welcome. Maybe you're already saved and in need of a church home, one that will nurture your growth and development as a Christian. Or perhaps you were once in fellowship with God but have since drifted away and are ready to return to your first love. Whatever the case, we'd love to have you become a part of the First Baptist family. Simply contact us at 301-773-3600 or visit our website at www.fbcglenarden.org for more information on any one of our four convenient services or our 100 plus ministries designed to meet your most intimate needs. First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, where God is developing dynamic disciples. Yeah.